we get set. <laughs> All right, and welcome to a Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Glory to God. Glad to have you with us tonight. And uh, go ahead and uh, share on your Facebook page uh, that we're here. And um, let me get this sound off. I'm, I thought I had flipped the little switch, but I missed it with my finger. There we go. Hallelujah. Couldn't get that silent mode to come on. Glory to God. Um, if, if I have a Carolina fan watching right now, then you are seriously committed to the things of God. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> you might be watching, if you're not, you might be watching your last Carolina game of the year. Hallelujah. If they lose tonight, they're out, I'm sure. They're not going to make the tournament at all. Uh, they're starting out like the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> not from what I've seen. <laughs> Where was Dak the, at the, when the Super Bowl was being played? He was out playing flag football the week before. <laughs> oh, glory to God. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, how many having a good week? All right. Four of you. All right. There's a few more of you. Right, let's take it up to the next level. Glory to God. Well, go ahead, if you will, and um, just have your Bibles open if you see if you're in the spirit or not. I fell right to the very scripture that Pastor was talking about. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. You know, uh, we are faced. We're, we're jumping in now, guys. We're, we're, we're actually going to jump right in here. We are faced with an ever-increasing sense of insecurity in the world. Um, I just saw today where a group of teenagers went into, into a restaurant in Queens yesterday. I don't know how many teenagers, what, 30 or so. And just started destroying it during business hours. Turned out, broke tables, tore them up. Customers were in there and everything. Just went in there, just tore it up. Just to tear it up. Now, you know, that's, that's crazy. And, of course, the thing just happened down in Atlanta with, the, uh, with basically Antifa terrorist. And I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to not call them a terrorist organization. They are. And, you know, at that, that time, it needs to be war and drop them in the streets. In, in, the natural, in the natural, it's time to drop them in the streets because they are a terrorist organization, and they're trying to destroy the country, okay? But we, as, as, as a regular citizenry, are not, you know, most of us are not riding around with our uh, concealed carry ready to blow somebody away the second they do something, okay? We, we're, we're trying to go just live our lives as normal. And um, when we look on television, I mean, it's full of murder and violence. And, of course, it's gun violence. Because the, the person pulling the trigger had nothing to do with it. The gun just jumped up in the hand while they held it and it shot him. Okay. Um, when we keep looking at that, we, st we start seeing and we're fed this all the time. And, of course, the politicians come out and go, well, you know, we got to stop this gun violence. We need stronger gun laws. We need to do away with assault rifles. You know, and they show the AR-15, which is, and they, people go, that means assault rifle. No, it, it does. It's the name of the company that manufactured it. Does not mean assault rifle. It's not a, an assault rifle. It's a rifle. And it doesn't matter if it's an assault rifle or not. You've got the right to keep and bear arms. Okay? For a well armed militia, what? To stop a centralized, powerful government from taking over every area of your life. Okay? Um, but people are getting where they don't feel safe in the streets, in the shopping malls, um, even, in the, even in their own homes. I, I was talking to the. Um, uh, a person who, well, the people we're buying our stores uh, barn from, and the owner of the company, uh, just a few months ago, went to the door to answer the door, and people wanted to know, you know, where so they had a package of like a deliver, like an Amazon type delivery guy. What? I don't think he had Amazon on him, but um, he, when he stepped out to show that the address was the neighbor's house, they pushed him into the house and pistol whipped him and his wife and robbed them. He's 80 years old. Okay, and so. We're getting to the point now, we, we, it's, it can be very easy after seeing all the news, all the news, all the news. We just don't feel safe anymore. And uh, as believers, where do we stand? Okay? Now, I'm not, I am not going to uh, say forego wisdom. I don't open the door for people I don't know. I just don't do it. And it's not that, well, my angel's with me, I'm going to open the door. I'm not going to open the door. Hello? That's, that's, not, that's not wise, knowing that people were trying to kick doors in and move in. You just don't go out there and say, hey, hey, look, just so you know, i got an angel here. Okay? 
But you do have to function. You do have to live. And, and listen, they come to my door. I don't even want to talk to them anyway. I, I don't want to buy your uh, encyclopedias. I don't want to buy your, you know, whatever you're selling. If I want it, I'll go get it. Because I don't even know if you're for real or not. Are you here? Okay. I just don't know. And so I'm not, I'm not going to open the door. Um, it's just not smart to open your door to strangers. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they want. And, um, but what do we do? Do you, un we got to understand we have an unseen, unseen force or source of protection or are we left to fend for ourselves? All right. So we want to take what the word says. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about divine protection tonight. Amen. Amen? Yes. Use wisdom, yes. but don't trust your wisdom. Trust God. Yes. Okay. Ha have things in place that are wise, but don't, you're not trusting that because that's not enough. Yeah, like I said, people were sitting in a restaurant and a bunch of gang thugs just ran in there and destroyed Did $20,000 worth of damage in about 10 minutes. Breaking tables and turning stuff over and, you know, just, just doing it to be a, on a rampage. Just no, no other reason. Didn't rob it or anything. Just went in there and tore stuff up. Because I thought it was funny. And that's funny. You know, you using uh, uh, the, the latest TikTok challenge or whatever. You remember that a few, couple few years ago? It was, eat, it was eating Tide Pods. And you want to go, we wonder about this generation. I do too. Your challenge is to eat Tide Pods. You know, you talk for three days and you butt bubbles coming out. Now there's some new binge drinking thing where they're, I forgot what it is, but they went, some university had 28 ambulances called for off campus stuff where they were doing this challenge. Yep. Had to be taken to the hospital. So there's craziness out there. Well, number one, now we can turn on the TV and we see all the craziness. We can pick up the newspaper. If you pick, you still get a newspaper. You can pick up your electronic newspaper. Hello? And uh, you can see all this stuff out there, which what you really need to do is pick up the Bible and find out that God is your divine protector. Amen? Amen. As, as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you have a divine protector, glory to God. And, I, and, and, and all the wisdom that you use. I say, you know, I was, tell, I was telling someone the other day, because they, they, uh, they were a substitute teacher at our school, and there's a single girl, she's about 30, and she travels. She likes to go traveling. And she says, and I said, well, I've been around the world, I've been to Bangkok. She says, well, I want to go to Bangkok. I said, you don't go by yourself. She's like, well, I, I, I said, no. You don't travel alone in that country. I said, they're one of the world's biggest sex uh, trade countries. People go there and buy children from villages to take back as sex slaves. I mean, you just don't, it's not smart to go over there by yourself, you know. And um, she said, well, people get together and, and, and they, they use this app and get all the people. Yeah, I'm thinking, how dumb can you be? The app will be the way they find out who you are and where you are and that you're by yourself. Hello. You know, where all the single people travel to get together and, work and travel together around the you know, country. You're just asking yourself to be set up. Okay. But, you know, um, on the other side of that, uh, you know, after the wisdom side, we have to have, really have our confidence in God. All right. Um, you should tell my kids, look, you don't need to be out after 11 o'clock. Ain't nothing going on. There ain't nothing good going on. Unless you're coming out of the theater because you went to a movie that ended up, you know, you got out of Top Gun at, at uh, 11.45, you know, and you're really cranked. Even then, as I really watch what I'm doing. When I, if I go to one of those movies like that real late, I'll come out and I'm watching everything. I'm looking around because I just don't want, you know, I just don't want to be foolish, you know. And most people, if they, see you, they know that you see them coming, they won't come most of the time. They'll, they'll go around. But my confidence is not in me looking around. Okay? I'm trying to be wise, trying to be smart, trying not to make myself an easy target or, with my, or my wife. I, I want to I know that, you know, I'm out and about and I'm, I'm living my life, that there is something greater than my, uh, my ability to do kung fu. You know? 
And of course, probably to them it looks like, <laughs> it slows down a little bit. But I have a divine protector. In Psalm 18, 2, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my strong tower. Amen. Amen. I've got a rock who is my strong tower. Amen. Hallelujah. And remember, it uses the word Lord here in all caps, meaning it is Jehovah. It is Yahweh. It is the covenant name of God. I have a covenant with a God who is my buckler, who is my strength, who is my protector. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And I can trust in his ability to protect me. Glory to God. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to use wisdom, but I'm going to put my faith in the fact that my God is my protector. Glory to God. God Almighty, the Father is my protector, hallelujah. He's able to secure me and keep me safe, praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus, in 2 Timothy 4, 17, it says here, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall send, uh, deliver me from every evil work. Amen. And will preserve me unto this heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Thank, and ever. Thank God he's going to preserve me from every evil work. <coughs> See, Satan will come against you. Not only in the natural are we fighting battles, there are spiritual battles. Really, well. that's why we're having them in the natural. Because the spiritual world, the spiritual battles are going on out there. And it's in disarray. And the enemy comes after us individually. Comes after us purposefully. But I know this, God, Jesus will deliver me from every evil work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The hand of the enemy is stayed through the power of the Lord. Glory to God. Can you say amen? I know this, glory to God, that my God's bigger than the devil. Bigger than his strategies. Bigger than his purposes. Bigger than anything he wants to throw at me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Ghost. Something about that Holy Ghost. Yeah. Isaiah 59, 19. So, they sh so shall they fear the name of the Lord. That Jehovah again. Covenant name. From the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the covenant God, the Lord, this covenant God shall lift up a standard against him. Glory to God. Now, this, really, this is really interesting because this whole phrase, lift up a standard against him, a standard against him in the Hebrew means put to flight. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God shall put him to flight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he comes in one way, he's got to flee seven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I know this. I got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost on my side. I got the divine trinity working for me. The enemy is a conquered foe. Hallelujah. And whether he's operating on spiritual things and working spiritual battles, or he's using the spirit realm to institute physical battles, God is bigger. God is greater. God is my protector. God is my standard razor-upper. I'm not sure if that's good English or not, but you know, hallelujah. Maybe some of y'all on the internet... Can, uh, can address my English there. My standard razor upper. It preaches better anyway that way. <clears throat> Amen? I don't have to fear. Now, like I said, we use wisdom, but we don't be afraid. We can't be paralyzed and functioning because stuff's going on in the world. We can't be paralyzed where we can't, can't go to the grocery store, or we can't do this, or we can't do that because of what's going on in the world. I'm going to use wisdom when I go out, but I am not going to be afraid to go out. Amen. I'm not locking my doors and putting 65 locks up. I am not Mel Gibson in conspiracy theory. Okay? I'm not going to have, you know, the, the lock where, it's, you know, if it twists a little bit, the, the bottle drops off and all that kind of stuff. The house burns up and, I, and I'm in a safe room and all that kind of stuff because he's, <coughs> uh, he's seen too much stuff. We cannot let the things we have, we have seen. And the experiences of life that people have had. And the newspapers and the media. 
put so much fear in us. It shouldn't be able to let any fear get in you. So we can't even function anymore. Amen? Because what's happened, what happens is, if you listen to all that all the time, you begin to lose sight of the reality that God is greater. God has a mighty arm. God is the strength of your salvation. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and he said, fear not, for I am with thee. Hallelujah. I said, he said, he said fear not. So he, when I go out, and I quote, using wisdom, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to, oh my God, I left my, I left my concealed carry at the house. I carry him everywhere I go. Hallelujah. I said, I carry him everywhere I go. Praise God. When I walk in, he's with me. When I walk out, he's with me. When I sit down at my meal, he's with me. Praise God. I don't want you to know this. And if the enemy tries to come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall put him to flight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil done been whooped by Jesus one time real good. And if he wants to keep coming around the church, we need to get to the point where he just gets tired of getting whooped again. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what? Uh, so we, we got this divine protection. We are divinely protected. Say, I am, I am. divinely protected. God is my protector. Is my Father, Father, Son, Son, and Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm protected. Glory to God. See, when you, when, and the, here's the thing. When you walk with God, God can say, don't go there. That can be part of the protection plan. Don't go over there. And you're going, well, well I, but, I, but I, there, there's some fried chicken over there I want. He said, don't go. Funny thing happened to one of Janie's coworkers when she was working at a scale over in High Point. He, uh, he had stopped off at the pantry on, um, um, at that time it was still Kivet, now it's MLK. At, at, at Scientific and, and MLK, and went and got some chicken. Now he, number one, he wasn't supposed to be in there first place because he's on a diet. He was sneaking it and not letting his wife know he's getting some fried chicken. <laughs> now, I don't know if the protector packed up and left at that moment or not. <coughs> but he learned the lesson that day because he comes walking out of the pantry with his fried chicken. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Don't that just sound good? There's something about the words fried and chicken in the same sentence that can make you salivate. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he starts hearing, pop, 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 pop. And there's a lot of shootings. They've had, they've had gang hits and murder people right in the cars at that intersection. And um, he's thinking, and all of a sudden people start running back into the store. And he looks down, and there's red all over his shoes. And he thinks, oh, God, I just went here to get chicken and got shot. It was Texas Pete hot sauce that busted open <laughs> <laughs> and poured all over his shoes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. Anyway, I don't know if God busted it, but it was funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to be afraid to go somewhere, but the Spirit of God speaks to us. The rest of says, don't do that. There's a reason. He's protecting you. Amen. And when, when you're getting in your car to go somewhere, and, this, and God says, go this way, and your heart just says, I, I need to go this way. You, just, you feel like you need to go this way. But then you try to override that. Yeah, but it takes longer. It's twice as far. And you want to barrel ahead. Listen to the Holy Ghost. I said, listen to him. You know that's who it is. You just, you just, why am I? You're just because you're so used to doing it your way. And he's trying to teach you to do it his way. Amen. So listen to him. Let's talk about some characteristics of this divine protection, though. Okay? So now we've established there's evil in the world. We know that. There's evil in the world. We know that the world and a lot of realms, places have gone absolutely cray-cray. 
Okay? Crazy don't cover it. Cray cray's better. Okay? It's cray cray. It's off the rails. We as believers are, are challenged. I mean, you know, when you look out there now, some school in Colorado just opened up the after school Satan club. Oh. Yep. Seven parents sent their kids to the after school Satan club, Satanist club. Why would you want your kids under that, that kind of influence? So logic and, 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 you know, just smarts have gone out the window. Okay. Um, and we're here in this, so we're in this evil world. And though we're in this world, we're not of this world. And so we don't have to follow the same rules. In other words, we don't have to hide and hunker down because of what's going on. Why? Because we just said, we've got a God who's our protector. Amen. Amen. And when the enemy comes in like a flood against our lives, the spirit of the covenant God, the Lord, will raise up a standard against him or cause him to flee. It sounds like the New Testament, don't it? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Submit yourself, uh, submit yourself therefore, to God and um, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And literally, he will flee from you as in terror. So that's just going right back here to Isaiah. He'll cause him to flee. He'll cause him to run as in terror. He'll run him off. He'll run him off. You ever been run off? You ever had people try to, you know, people, people listen, people can, God can run people off. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, God can run people off. Amen. Glory to God. I, I just love Facebook stuff because I just absolutely wiped out my whole thing I was doing here so I could track and, and share and keep people. There we go. Back here. We're back. All right. I'm going to share it again in case somebody just got, on, got online and want to make sure they get in here on this. We're going to talk about some characteristics of this divine protection. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. This divine protection is awesome. This divine protection would work in your life. Glory to God. This divine protection is a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut that whole thing down. I'm going to go back on my phone. I'm going to press, you know, Facebook. I'm going to press the little air thing there. I'm going to click Expedition Churches Live. It's going to pop back up. Hallelujah. I'm going to share it again. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. All right. Everything's back up and working again. First of all, this protection is continuous. It's not like, you know, we're going to park a police car in front of your house for the next few nights just to make sure everything's okay. You got 24 7. Hallelujah. Psalm 121 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my salvation. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth, is, uh, keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord, the covenant God, yes. is thy keeper. The covenant God is thy shade upon thy right hand. Hallelujah. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The covenant God shall preserve thee from all evil. Glory to God. He shall preserve thy soul. The covenant God shall preserve thy come going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Isn't that good news? I said, isn't that good news? Hallelujah. Secondly, it's unfailing. Joshua 1, 5 says, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Joshua has a little bit to look back on. Yeah. Amen. He's worked with Moses for over 40 years. See, he was with him when Moses came to deliver the children of Israel. He was within 40 years in the wilderness as they watched God work miracle after miracle after miracle. So Joshua has a 40-year track record to measure this statement against. And so when God says to him, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I'm telling you, he's got something to go, wow. <clears throat> I saw him feed us manna. I saw him give us quail. I saw him give water from the rock in the wilderness. I saw him be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I saw him do this and I saw him do that and prove himself strong. And now he just says, that's just like I was with Moses, 
I'll be with you. Hallelujah. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Awesome. He's unfailing. This protection that comes from God is continuous and it is unfailing. God will not fail you. I love that scripture in the New Testament where it says, if you, if you do this and he'll do that, and he'll do this, and he'll do that. But then when it gets down to faithful, if you, are, if you do not abide faithful, yet he abideth faithful. God can't be unfaithful. Hallelujah. And he said, I will, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You hear people talking, and, uh, and bless their hearts, you know, we have a lot of religious concepts built on experiences about from people who were Christians who don't know what the Bible says about it. And, they, you know, they love God. They serve God. They just don't know what His Word says about Him. And so they're operating, you know, um, the Scripture says this, my people perish for a lack of knowledge or run wild, literally. For a lack of knowledge. If you, don't have, if you don't have knowledge about something, amen. Now, uh, we got the geek department here at, at Expedition Church. Programmers, former programmers, former systems analysts, you know, just all overall geek people. Okay? But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know, in, in every computer language, <clears throat> High level, mid level, low level. Now, low level means it's more complex. We're getting down to machine language, binary. On top of that, assembler. Okay, we're getting right, we're getting down to the registers. Okay, high level is stuff like Visual DBase or DBase nineteen, I mean twenty nineteen, where it's written on top of JavaScript, which is written on top of this, which is written on top of that, and it's written on top of this, and gets on down to you know where it's on top of machine language. All right. But I can tell you, if you don't know, you might know the logic of what you want to do, but if you don't know the code to do it, you won't get it done. And you might have the knowledge that God is a good God, but if you don't know the code, the word, you're not going to be able to get it done. You might think, well, I think the way to do this is such such. I remember one time I was coding um, a, um, I, put, I put it in a do loop. And one of the things they taught us in school was avoid, if you possibly can, nested do's. Did you ever hear that? Y'all ever hear that? Avoid net. What's a nested do? Do this condition, and then in that, in that do, you got another do this condition, and in that you got another do this condition. And you can forget which, how many do, in do's you got to put out there to get rid of all the do's. And it gets, you can set that whole program up and just end up sitting there. And they call it an endless do loop, an endless loop. It'll just sit there because you didn't get out of the condition because you didn't have it. It was nested. Well, there's a, there's a coding practice in DBase, and I'm sure it's in other languages, called do case. It does what you would do with a nested do, except it's cleaner and you don't have all the end do's, all that stuff in there. It's because you've got one do and one end do, in, in case. One do case, in case. And then you set all these different conditions in there. And if it hits that condition, whenever it hits it, it kicks out. It beats that condition, kicks out. So it might be the first one, it might be the last one. It might have 25, it might be one, it might be 15, it might be 25. Okay? If you don't know that, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Okay? Now, I taught myself debase by taking, <laughs> y'all may think it's funny, taking the logic of RPG2, which I knew, and finding all the code in the DBase book that did the command of what I knew how to do in RPG2. And that's how I taught myself how to program in, in DBase. Because same logic, I just needed to know what the code was. And you see, when you go to God and, and you start looking at him, uh, you know, you're my protector and this kind of thing, you got to know what it says how to apply that. Because if you think God did it to you and the code don't work that way, you're in trouble. When I actually, actually the Bible says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. 
Amen. So if you don't know that, you're putting the wrong code in and you're not going to get the right answer out. Hello? I, I know this. You put the wrong code in, it'll mess your program up. Look, you just put the wrong password in and it won't work right. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? We just had to fix my email tonight just because something got squirrely in the, in the server about the, about the uh, passcode. And I stopped receiving the emails on that, that account a month ago. Wouldn't come in. <clears throat> Changed it. Boom. They're all coming in. All the ones I missed. Hallelujah for a month. Praise God. Glad we got it fixed. And you know what? God's the same way, folks. When you get into his word and find out what God will do, who the enemy is, what God says he's your protector, and you start seeing from the word what to do, how to apply it, then it will work. Now, I can tell you, if you're walking around saying, well, I don't know why God put that on me, but, I, you know, uh, if, if it's his will, he, please remove it, Lord. But if not, then give me the grace to suffer through. And let me say this. There are a lot of well-meaning People who love the Lord, who actually believe that and say that, and then, you know, don't, and wonder why they don't get delivered. Well, they really don't wonder because then they've already acquiesced to the statement that if they don't, then it was God's will. And they're putting up with letting the devil run roughshod over them. Hello? Not knowing that they don't have to and that they can win the battle and walk free from it. Hello? Can you say amen? amen. We, want you, we want you to know how to run roughshod over the devil and stay free from all his junk. Amen. amen. And live in the best that God has for you. This whole new sphere, this whole new plane, all together with God. So it's un, it is continuous, unfailing. And this, listen, um, it is assuring. There is nothing like being assured everything's okay. Amen. There is just nothing like that. The peace that it brings. Hello? Uh, Blue got, um, Nathan's neighbor threw, had been throwing food over his fence. Just instead of putting it in his trash can, he, threw the, he, he would throw the bags of garbage over his fence. And he must have missed one of the bags, and it had like moldy food in it. He came home from work a couple weeks ago, and Blue was deathly ill. He's laying there. He's, he's uh, defecated all over his kennel, uh, everything, and foaming at the mouth. So, uh, and it was at night, of course. So take him to the emergency vet. Take him in. They put him on, you know, IVs and, you know, start giving him stuff to, to fight the, it was mold infection. It was from mold. He, he was having a, a response to mold from ingesting mold. And, um, you know, by the next day he was back. See, he, he was having tremors. He would stand up. He would shake. Couldn't stand up. And uh, they had him on IVs overnight and then giving him some medicine and that kind of stuff. Had some stuff to take when he got home. Um, but, you know, and the doctor told him if he waited another hour, he probably wouldn't have made it. Mm. You know. So, yeah, bless it. But he's back normal. Hooray! <laughs> He, he gets psycho eyes. I, I don't know what else to tell you. The dog gets psycho eyes when he starts howling like that. And he's not going to do anything. Like uh, Elena will get up to go to the door to go to work. He goes up and gets in front of the door and sits down and gives her that look. <laughs> Interpretation. You can't leave. Yeah, but you look psycho. He's not. He's just, you can't leave. That's his love language. <laughs> psycho. Okay. <clears throat> um, but the doctor came out and said, look, he's going to be okay. See, Nathan was really upset. He, was, he, he loves his dog. He's like his papa in that manner. He, he loves his dog. And I don't know if he loves her more than Elena, but pretty much might be on the, you know, <laughs> it might be on the, you know, pretty close to the same level. I mean, if she said, leave me, uh, it's me or the dog, he might say, it's been nice to be married to, I don't know. I'm, I'm just joking now. I'm, I mean, I'm being silly. You know, he, he loves his wife. He loves that girl. But, and she loves that dog. She, she wouldn't tell him to get rid of that dog. 
All right, but he loves his doctor. There was so it was so reassuring for the doctor to come out and say he's okay. He's gonna be all right. Okay, we got it in time. He's gonna be okay. He's gonna, you know, gonna have this for you know a little while. He'll have some tremors for a few days, uh, but he'll get all out of his system. He'll be all right, and he is. About three or four days later, he was back to almost full normal. But my son has to go outside now in his backyard and, and police his backyard, make sure the neighbor hadn't thrown stuff over again. You know? Absolutely. Great, great. All right. But Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. There you go. Stop. Don't be afraid. Why do I not have to be afraid? God's with you. Nor be dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What's his right hand? It's his hand of power. The right hand represents the hand of power. So God's telling you, and assure, reassuring you, giving you the assurance that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be dismayed because he's your God. Hallelujah. He's on your side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It's also preserving. Amen. Um, my father, John 10, 29, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Hallelujah. So there is a preserving aspect of the, hallelujah, the protection of God. What is it against? I mean, okay, got a cray cray world out there. God is our, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost is our protection. It's continuous. It's unfailing. It's assuring. Amen. It's preserving. But against what? Not your wife, unless she's really cray-cray. I mean, if she's got a knife going, and looking at you with weird eyes, yeah. You know? This protection is against evil. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God will, will keep you. He will establish you and keep you from evil. And notice it says he's faithful. See, that ties into that unfailing aspect of it. God's not going to have a bad day. When, when the carpenters sang Rainy Days and Mondays Always Get Me Down, it was not a song they sing in heaven. Okay? When, when B.J. Thomas talked about raindrops falling on his head, you know, and his feet were too big for his bed, he won't, they won't, I want a song from heaven. Okay? When the hee-haw sang gloom, despair, and agony on me, that's not a song from heaven. God is faithful. God is steadfast. And he will keep you from evil. He will establish you and keep you from evil. Next, he will keep you from, he will uh, use his divine protection to keep you from temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer, will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. God sets some ground rules out there. This ought to be a reassuring. I said, this ought to be, there are ground rules. What's one of the ground rules? The devil can't try to do more to you than you've got the equipment to win against. So that means if something shows up, God's already, God's telling you, you got the stuff to overcome this. You've already, you're already got it. You are MacGyver. Whatever you got in the toolbox and you twine or a cigarette lighter or a wrench and it don't look like it's good, you got the stuff to make it to win. Amen. How many never saw MacGyver? You never saw MacGyver? Oh, I said, how many never saw MacGyver? I was, I was like, this? I was sure you saw MacGyver. Ellie saw MacGyver? No, Belinda? You did not. 
How could you not see MacGyver? Well, the whole that show's premise was that whatever, you know, he'd get in all these real sticky situations and he had to figure out how to get out of it. And he would like look and find a, a, <coughs> some string here or this over there. And, that, and he would put it all together and get out of the situation. Whenever the devil comes, God will not suffer you, not allow you to be tempted about what you were able. Listen, we interpret that too often to mean about what we're able to handle and to put up with and to suffer through. No! He can't try to do anything to you that you're not able to overcome and to win. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. <coughs> How do you know he's talking that way? Well, look what he says else. Suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. See, when you can get out of it, you bear up under it. Amen. Whatever you're facing, you can, you can bear up in the middle of something knowing you're escaping. Amen. It's the, we never know what God's going to do one of these days in the sweet by and by. We might get free from this. You just, we don't know why God's doing this. I don't know why God killed my wife and ran over my dog and, and, you know, and, and murdered my kids. He had a, no! That's evil. I said, that's evil. Right now, we put people in jail for killing kids. Hello? You'll put them in jail for running over your dog. It's a $250,000 fine to kill a pre-born eagle. We, we get, you know, all I've talked about that. We think, you know, it's protecting life. Then we turn around and blame God and say, God did it. No, I almost said stupid. No, stupid. God's not a murderer. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, destroy. I am come that they might have Zoe, life in the absolute sense, life in the manner that God has it, and have it to the full, or more abundantly, the King James says. Hallelujah. No. He will give you a way to get out of it. He has a way out. It's called the way of faith. Revelation 3.10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth, to try them that dwell upon the earth. There's an hour of temptation coming. But this hand of protection will keep us from that temptation. Persecution. God's divine protection will keep us from persecution. That means it won't come, just it keeps us. See, we become, the more we trust in God, and the more we realize who God is, and more that we realize what God will do, we become like water on the duck's back. It just rolls right off. It won't, it can't, it, the oil on the, on the duck is so, you know, it's, uh, their feathers and stuff are so oily, their skin is so oily, that water just, it won't soak in, it'll just run right off. Hallelujah. And you're covered in the oil of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. 2 Timothy 3.11, persecutions, afflictions, which came upon me in Antioch, Iconium, Iconium, sorry, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, well, how could you endure them? Because out of them all, the Lord delivered me. See, he said, I will make a means of escape. Paul understood. See, Paul wrote both of them. Paul understood. Are you here? That God will make a means of escape so he could endure whatever he was going through because he knew the Lord's deliverance was coming his direction. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't have to worry. He didn't have to sit there and go, oh, God, how am I, I'll never get out of this. You, no, 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 no. That's fear. Enemies, Isaiah 59, 19, we've already read that, but we read it again. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them, as we said earlier, shall cause them to flee. That's the Hebrew. From falling, Jude 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. Hallelujah. From dangers. 
We live in a dangerous world. We're walking in a dangerous world. Hello. But we don't have to be afraid, you know, that we're going to go to the marketplace and it's going to get bombed. God's able to protect us from dangers. Amen. And he is not a hurricane and he is not a tornado. Bless, bless people's hearts. Psalm 91, 3, surely of an assurance, I testify that he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I remember one time um, somebody in my church was ministering and um, it was my assistant at the time. And he had looked this up. This was back in the anthrax scare. Remember the anthrax? Everybody was scared to get white powder. People get white powder, they freak out because it was you know, anthrax, you know. And um, noisome pestilence meant, literally meant uh, animal diseases. And all anthrax is is a weaponized animal disease. It is a wep You know, cows get anthrax all the time. And they have, you know, they have vaccines to keep cows from getting anthrax. They took that virus or, or whatever. This is a bacteria. I think it's a virus. They took anthrax and weaponized it. Just like they did COVID. COVID became COVID-19 because they did uh, gain-of-function research on it. They weaponized it. Hello, you go, go look it up. It's, it's, they, they weaponized it. They made it make the jump that would not have naturally happened from animals to plants to humans. They went and modified to make it do it called gain-of-function research. Why are we doing gain-of-function research? I mean, well, we need to know. It's not likely to happen. And you, you're taking a chance of creating something. It's like Mission Impossible 2 when they, they created Calmyra and created the vaccine and then released the Calmyra into the general public so they could sell the vaccine to, and to inoculate the public against this evil thing that no, there's nothing for it except their vaccine and get, you know, crazy rich. I don't know about you. That sounds kind of like what may have happened here. All of a sudden the whole world's having to take the vaccine. All right. Um, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of this. God keeps, have you ever noticed God's always saying, don't be afraid. Have you ever seen in the Bible where God says, boy, you ought to be afraid. I'm going to be, as a matter of fact, the angel says, I'm going to tell you something right now. If I was in your shoes as a human, I'd be afraid right now. You ever see that in the Bible? Why? What's the message? Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. 95% of the time, there's some kind of a visitation. The first words are fear not. Why? Wow. Because they are freaking out about this ghost thing looking at them. Y'all here, you go home. Amen? Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Hallelujah. Or nor the um, pestilence that walketh in darkness. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you don't think God's referring to stuff like this stuff, the pestilence that walketh in darkness and under the guise of evil men with ulterior motives to make uh, phenomenal amounts of money. Do you know that one of the vaccine companies made a hundred billion dollars last year? Way above their normal average, uh, what? Selling the vaccine. Well, I got it for free. Who do you think paid for it? Governments around the world bought it and paid for it. Huh? We all paid for it. That's right. Tax money paid for it. We just didn't see it. it you didn't go to the counter and put down $45. It came out of your taxes. Globally, it happened. 100, just one of the companies. There were, there were several companies that had, had a, a version of a vaccine. <coughs> and that company was involved in the gain-of-function research. Uh-huh. We'll just leave it there. How about that? I mean, are you against medicine? No, I'm not against medicine at all. I'm against evil people doing evil stuff and weaponizing stuff so they can get rich. And that's what, that's, I, personally, I believe that's what happened. I don't, I don't believe this was a 
lab leak. I believe it was a deliberate leak, if you can call that a leak. Okay? And they let it out. So the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that waiteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. That's what I, I, when, when COVID first came out, what did you hear me say it all the time? Thank you, Penny remembers. I am a virus kill zone. Hello? I'm like the A-team. I got a, you know, the A-team, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, the, not the A-team on TV where they went out and they did all this undercover, uh, you know, uh, for hire, you know, take people out stuff. Real A-teams in Vietnam came in with construction battalion stuff and cleared zones, and they created around encampments called kill zones. They pushed it back away from the camp. So when the enemy ca came out into that opening, okay, so kill zone. I'm a virus kill zone. Hello. When the virus shows up in that room, it gets taken out. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Now, I, I mean, you know, I, I think this past, uh, past few months, I got, I, I got COVID according to the test. But I felt like for a couple of days I had like a, the, the beginning sentence of a little bit of a flu or a cold. But I couldn't go back to work because, of, because I tested. I'm like, I can go back to work. I feel fine. Hello? You can't come back in the building for five days. But, but I, I feel fine. Doesn't matter. See, the test is more. We've got to make sure that we have numbers saying you had COVID. And you get, but I feel fine. So it, it tried to show up and, and died. I said, it, it showed up and died. It didn't get to do anything. You hear you're going home. So what did I do? I got a vacation. Okay. I think I'll just sleep a little bit and go out and eat. You didn't stay in No. And that stupid mask you're wearing ain't going to do anything anyway. The virus is smaller than your mask with block. Are you here? It's like my father-in-law one time. He was down, he's an electrician. He was down in Eastern Carolina. Now, you got to understand Eastern Carolina. We got skeeters down there. They're, they're, they come in platoons. You know? Well, we got all that inlet, swampy land down there. You know, you got all the inlets. You go down to Rose, uh, uh, Rose Hill and Swan Quarter and, you know, all these swampy places now, there are inlets with marsh and all that kind of stuff. And that's where we, I was working for a mobile home company in between getting saved and going to Ramah. Um, and so I was, I was setting up mobile homes and we went and set them in and you'd be down there on the ground with sweat going everywhere, fighting the gnats. They all come for the, to the water trough, your eyes. You're down there trying to do stuff and gnats all in your face, up your nostrils. And I mean, and then you hear it. It's a mosquito coming in for a landing. I mean, big boys. It's not like a B-52. Hello? I thought, I thought, I didn't know we were that, that close to Camp Lejeune or Cherry Point. Okay? And uh, <laughs> I'm serious. But the, so my father-in-law's down there doing an electric job, and the guy says, um, uh, can you get some chain link fence and put on my windows? He said, what for? He said, to keep the mosquitoes out. He said, that ain't going to keep the mosquitoes out. He said, the ones that get through it, the ones that bother me, it's the ones that can't. <laughs> Some big skeeters. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And God will keep you from calamities. Amen. Psalm 57 one says, be merciful unto me, O God, might be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings I make that my refuge. And until these calamities be overpassed, you can hide in him. And the storms of life can be blowing, and they can be all around you and doing all their ugly stuff, and you can hide in him until they overpass because his, his protection is there. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I remember when we were going to Oklahoma. It was the first time that, that Jamie and I drove out together. Um, you know, I had flown, I had driven out to Oklahoma to go to Ramah, and she flew out to see me um, one time. And I drove home a couple times while I was out there, you know, in my demon car. I had an AMC Gremlin. If you look up Gremlin in the dictionary, it says demon, imp, all kinds of different names for it, but you know, demon car. And I, say, I call it my demon car. All right? But it did have Rama or bust on shoe polish in it, so we got it sanctified. And um, so we're on the way out to Oklahoma. That's, that's, the, that's the windshield wiper trip because we run into this massive line. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like spring in the Midwest. And so we ran into the, tor the tornado line. And I'm driving from Little Rock, Arkansas, all the way into Tulsa, leaned over, going, Shh. Because the hole got into the vacuum line. They were vacuum windshield wipers. And so he had to turn it off, let the vacuum build up enough to pull the windshield wiper up. And it, it was only do it one time. So he had to turn it back off. So we go, Reep. and it wouldn't go back up until you turned it off and turned it back on. Four hours. Truck spray. We get, we get up on the Muskogee Turnpike. And um, start heading up toward Tulsa, get off a of 40 and get on the Muskogee Turnpike. And um, I can't remember if we're going to Muskogee yet or not. I don't think we're quite in Muskogee yet. And um, I mean, it got bad. And we turned on KCFO, which was the uh, Christian radio station out there back then. Um, it meant KCFO, the CFO meant camp meeting far out. <laughs> it's talking about old fashioned camp meetings. And um, so. Uh, it was talking about take cover, da 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 da. We, and, we, and, we, and, I'm listening, and I know enough about the geography from living out there. I'm thinking that tornado is about six miles to my west. So we pulled off under an underpass, so I didn't have to do this. And we sat there for about thirty minutes. So that line passed. We got back on the road. We drove about a quarter mile, and tractor trailers were blown over all over the place. Oh it just blown them over. And uh, got up into Tulsa. And we were going to go see Fawaz, my buddy Fawaz, at the, 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 um, the village, I think the village tavern. It was just, it was a pancake place, the breakfast place. Yeah. Yeah, you, when you're younger, you always find the pancake places. You get a lot of food cheap. You can get a stack with slots of syrup and butter and some bacon. Hallelujah. And I had to spend a whole lot of money. Amen. And uh, so we're, we're, get, we're up there. And uh, we're, we're down, getting down around 21st Street off of Sheridan, uh, getting, you know, 20th Street. So we're only, you know, like uh, three miles from downtown on the city streets. And we're sitting there in traffic, everything's stopped. And um, here comes this huge metal trash can blowing down the road. And I'm stopped. I can't move. That car's on both sides of me. Okay. Now, listen, Jamie and I don't have any money. I mean, we're married. We, we're, we're, you know, we're, we've taken everything we got to get just to get to Tulsa. And I don't know what I know now, then what I know now. I mean, the hotels I stayed in, then I wouldn't go stay in now. You know, they weren't good then, but we could afford it. That's what we could afford at the time. We didn't know. We didn't know enough about faith to believe God for something a little bit nicer. They didn't, you know, they didn't smell like it was, you know, 40 years old mold. We were just, we were at the meeting. Praise God. We paid the price to be in the meeting. And here comes this thing. It's blown right down the road at me. And all I do is go, in the name of Jesus. And that trash can gets right up about five foot in front of the car, moves over. Like a, I mean, it's like a 90 degree angle. Turns back right again and goes right between me and the car beside me. Misses both of us. He got in on my protection. Yeah. <laughs> and I look in the mirror. It's just blowing down the road, not hitting anybody. But it, it was, I mean, it was dead on right at my car. You ever don't believe it, go ask my wife. I mean, he's heading right for the car. Well, my demon car, I don't have enough money to fix the demon car so I can keep driving it. If I would, I would have had windshield wipers that worked. Okay? All it was was a little hose. I didn't have the money to get the hose on there. Amen? You know, God will deliver us from calamities. He'll deliver. Listen, that would have been a calamity to spend whatever had money I had to spend to get my headlights so I could drive on the road. At that, time, at that time, working headlights was a big deal. 
Then you get to a certain stage of life, okay, bust out the headlight, I'll go get it fixed. And you don't think about it because you're, you're not where you were back then. Okay? I'm not where I was back then. Thank God. Because when I went to Raymond, folks, I wasn't the man of faith and power. I was a man of paste and powder. I'm telling you the truth. I lived on a pack of hot dogs and four boxes of macaroni and cheese a week. Well, wow. because you could get two hot dogs, and they were 10 in the pack back then, for most of them. Now, I'm not talking about all beef Oscar Mayer or Hebrew Nationals or whatever. I'm talking about the cheap ones that you don't even know if there's beef in them. You know, the chicken franks. Hello? With the extra dye in it to cover up the fat. And the extra monosodium glutamate to hide the flavor. I'd boil two of those, and you could, you know, you could buy a box, four boxes of mac and cheese for a dollar. So two hot dogs and, four, and a box of mac and cheese, I, I, you know, I forgot how much of hot dogs were. They were less than $2. So for $3, I could eat for four days at less than a dollar a day. You're thinking, yeah, but you're at Raymond. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning about faith. I'm learning how to live by faith. I don't know how to live by faith yet. Hello? I don't buy those hot dogs anymore. Are you racist on hot dogs? Yes. I'm prejudiced on hot dogs. I want all beef, for, in, in particular, either uh, Nathan's or Hebrew Nationals. Okay? I like the colossal Nathan's. They're quarter pounders. You don't like those, Janice? Just right. Ain't it, Jerry? Quarter pounder. Put some chili on there. Janie's homemade chili. Some shredded ch uh, cheddar. Slop some mustard on there. I mean, and you can't hardly get it in your mouth. It's sick. <laughs> mm. Them little Al Albertson hot dogs I would get, you know, you put them in your mouth, and one bite, they're all gone. Okay? Hallelujah. So you can see, not only has God provided protection, He is the one doing the protecting. With our God as our protector, we have, we have no right to fear. Because the Scripture says, what shall we say then? Romans 8, 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be? against us the answer certainly is no one can be against us not satan not any of his demons hallelujah the scriptures plainly tell us that they are a defeated foe colossians 2 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled put to open shame the principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, respect the holiday or of the new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. Glory to God. Know this. 2 Kings 6, 14 through 18. Prophet Elijah, Elisha was telling off on the enemy. The king and all of his guys would get together and make strategy plans against Israel. He said, well, tomorrow we're going to go do this. Well, Elisha would go to his king and say, here's their plan. And they were ready for it. And everything that they tried to do, every time they came, they were ready for him. So finally, the king of the other side said, all right, we got a traitor in our camp. I'm paraphrasing the whole story now. This is what he said. We got a traitor. Who's telling on us? They said, nobody. There's a prophet over there. And whatever you're doing secret in here, he tells them over there. I said, okay. Now, here's how stupid the devil is. The guy knows your plans. He's telling all your plans. But they're going to do a sneak attack and get him. You don't think he's going to know you're playing? <laughs> think about it now. That's how dumb the devil is. 
Okay, I'll tell you what. It's like Rocky. Hey, I know what we're going to do. <laughs> I'll show them. We're going to go get the prophet. Really? You don't think it's maybe time to cut, uh, cut bait? Hello? You don't think maybe time it's, it's time to reassess your attacking paradigm and leave? No, they're going to go get the prophet. So they go and get all the guys up, send them over there, surround them. Elisha's servant goes out in the morning, looks up. He's doing whatever he's doing. Looks up and sees all these guys around him. And he's like, up, boss, we got a problem out here. Elisha comes out. Said, what is it, son? He said, duh. He says, why, why are you uptight? There's be more with us than be with them. And the servant goes, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look, boss, I just got the ten, and then I ain't even got started. And it kind of goes through this a little bit, you know, in this whole narrative that there's more to be with us than be with them. And finally, he says, Lord, open his eyes. And he sees the host of the armies of the, the host of the armies of the chariots of the Lord surrounded about them. And he says, now strike them blind. Hello. <laughs> they got it all struck blind. And then he leads them into the city. <laughs> Hello. God. I said, God. Don't think because we're in the new covenant that God stopped knowing how to take the enemy and show him who he is. Hello. Amen. <clears throat> well, um, good friend of ours. We haven't seen him in a number of years. Uh, uh, but John Nuzo, um, his uncle, or granddad, I think maybe his granddad. Um, yeah, yeah, Nuzo, you can figure out they're Italian, right? And, they, you know, apparently they were, they were involved in some Italian things. My organized crime, mafiosa, that kind of thing. Well, you know, the relative got born again. Well, he realized when he was born again, he had left. He wasn't going to keep doing the stuff he'd been doing. He saved. Well, you don't leave them. They kill you. That's how it works. You can leave. Dead. That's why it works. And so one night, they sent their guys out to take him out. Okay? He's out walking down the street by himself, just singing to the Lord, whistling, carrying on. And the guy's hiding in a bush, waiting for him. So when he walked by, he's going to shoot him and kill him. And um, he's walking down the street. And he's walking down the street. Walks right past the guy. The guy doesn't do anything. So he sees him a couple of days later out, on, out in public. He said, where'd you get that guy? He said, what guy? He said, I was sent the other night to kill you. He said, and I saw you, I was hiding in such and such, and I saw you come down the block two blocks away. He said, that big guy you had with you. He put his hand in his coat and made eye contact with me and watched me the whole time and walked by looking at me. So I didn't do anything. He said, there wasn't nobody with me. He said, I was by myself. <laughs> no, he wasn't. I said, no, he wasn't. We hear testimonies like this all the time. There was a, there was a group of people in the islands. They were, they were missionaries. And they, they, had a, they, had a, they had their house out on a little island, you know, separate island. And they were going to send, you know, they, they were sending people out to kill them. Yet when they got there, they were coming by water and sneak up and come in and assassinate them. When they got there, there were men in white robes all the way around the perimeter watching them. So they said, where did you get those guys? We don't have any people. Oh, yeah, you do. No, we don't. Yeah. See, the, arm, the angels are there. The armies of the Lord are encamped around about us, praise God. Hallelujah. When they started the Bible school in Sicily, y'all you know what Sicily is, don't you? It is the head of the worldwide mafiosa. Okay, that is the that is the home of the mafiosa. It's so bad the Italian government has gone in now and cleaned it up just so people will go there. Because it was so bad. In the past 20 years, they've done a lot of cleaning up, but it was bad, bad. And so they came to the church and said, You gotta pay, you gotta pay protection money. 
They said, we're not paying you protection money. So you've got to pay protection money. They said, we're not doing it. God's our protection. Okay. So they go back and tell the boss. They said, they're not paying. They okay, go, go do what you do. So they come. Going to come in and, you know, and take them out. Go back and send a message. You don't tell us you're not paying. They get ready. They come up to the door and start to walk in the door and bounce off the opening. And they try it several times. And they can't get in. They can't get in the door. And so finally, they saw them on the streets and said, we're not going to mess with you guys. There's a, there's a power you guys have that, that's bigger than us. You know, missionary, the Raymond missionary in, in the Philippines was preaching one night, and the Muslim terrorists came to kill her. Walked into the back of the church with a machine gun. A couple of them. They're going to they're mow them down. They walk in the door. She saw it. She waved her hand, kept preaching. When she waved her hand, they fell to the floor and couldn't get up. They were glued to the floor and could not get up. And then when she got done preaching, she waved her hand at them again. They got up and ran out of the building and never saw them again. God's bigger. See, well, you know, God did all kinds of stuff in the Old Testament, and that was really cool. But, you know, we're in the new day. No, no, God's still God. Amen. There's still evil out there. And God will protect you. <coughs> God is your protection. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And you can trust in Him. You can trust Him to keep you. You can trust Him to watch over you. You can trust Him to uh, sustain you in the midst of trouble, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Yes. Glory to God. Be encouraged for the week. Yes. Glory to God. Uh, it's time to give. You know, offering an envelope on the seat backs in front of you. You're giving through electronic means of cash app or PayPal. Uh, those, you know those cash tag and the uh, PayPal thing now. Those watching online, it is cash tag. It's dollar sign expedition triad, all lowercase. So the dollar sign expedition triad, lowercase, all one. There's no spaces. Um, for Cash App, and then give at expeditiontriad.org for PayPal. So give at expeditiontriad.org for PayPal. Dollar sign, Expedition Triad for Cash App, if you're sending electronic offerings. Hallelujah. If you're giving to help support um, um, missions, trips, specify capital. Hallelujah. And um, glory to God. If you're giving for some other reason, building fund, General outreach, um, just memo that, okay? So I'm, I'm going to send $500, but I want 100 of it to go to building fund. Just memo 100 building, building fund. One of the other 400 goes into general offering, the 100 goes into building fund. We, you know, we, we're smart like that. We can figure that out. We can subtract. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, our building is under construction. Hopefully, hopefully we'll hear from some of them. So have y'all done anything else or? Okay. Um, we've got permission from our neighbor behind us. Uh, Michelle's just so excited what we're doing. Hallelujah. Um, we, we got permission to come in from the back and get straight in without having to try to navigate this little tiny hole over here and figure out how we're going to make that turn with a 32 foot long building. That's a tight turn for 30. But it's not a tight turn for 12 foot. The 32 foot gets a little bit more challenging. Okay. So, uh, you know, so she's going to let us just back right up in that driveway, back right over here, and just slide it right in. Hallelujah. That's awesome. So we're gonna, then we'll pour a sidewalk from over here to around there and uh, get all that paid for. Then we're going to you know, look at getting the awning on the front of the building. Uh, not, not really not awning, I, I guess a covered entrance. Okay? And uh, really, really add to the, the aesthetics of the, of, the, of the building. Amen? Hallelujah. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is get gravel and, and, and rework the parking lot with more gravel, deeper gravel, and get it nice and good and level and get it back where it needs to be. But, you know, we're, we're there. I mean, we're getting there. Hallelujah. We got our own building. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had a paved parking lot in the business park. Yeah, we couldn't do anything. You know, kids can't go out there and play. Why? They might skin their knees on that asphalt. We got acres, acres, acres. They can run till their tongue is hanging out of their mouth. Come in and get water and do it again. On grass. Hallelujah. Go down the slide. Amen.
We can sit out there with the bonfire, well, not a bonfire, but the, the uh, fire pit, and, you know, eat Pastor Ed's famous down east barbecue, <laughs> fried chicken. Mm, hallelujah. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe, as they give right now. We thank you, heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't forget Sunday morning. Again, if you're interested in helping us through uh, serving and or if you want to make desserts uh, for the um, March 24th Raymond Ministerial Association uh, district meeting, um, please let us know. Glory to God. We would love to have you involved. Um, we can buy desserts, but if, you want to, if, you're, if that's your kind of gig, if you're one of those people who like to do things like that, we'd just love to have you do stuff like that. Amen. Now I can go to the store and buy cheesecake, da 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 da, da. But if you like kind of doing that kind of stuff, we'd we would not want to deny you the opportunity to do that kind of stuff. Because I like homemade stuff. Amen? Now, you might make a good carrot cake. I just hadn't found one better than what my wife makes. She makes one awesome carrot cake. I love her carrot cake. <clears throat> we all love Belinda's chocolate eclair cake. Thing, whatever it is. Chocolate eclair thingies. Yes, we do. Yes, I do. More than you. What Shannon is saying, she brings it. Nobody wants to eat it because she's taking it. Whew. I remember the first time she brought that thing. Oh, oh Jesus, did I just get raptured? <laughs> Have my own personal mini rapture. He sent me back. You know why? So I could get more. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, everybody. <coughs> we appreciate you coming out tonight. Bless you. Have a great week. Don't forget Sunday morning. And what happens Sunday morning? Thank you. Be, don't show up. And go, why'd they start church so early without me? They're letting out. No, you got out of bed late. Hallelujah. So I, I, I recommend setting your clock forward on Friday night. So you got all day Saturday to adjust. Yeah. Amen. Some of you are going, ain't happening. I'm, I'm part of the resistance. I am fighting this right up to the last second. <laughs> Vive la standard time. <laughs> and I agree with that. All right. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Join us here live at Expedition Church of the Triad in Pleasant Garden, where we're living a life of victory forged by faith. See you next time. God bless you. Have a great week in Jesus. Amen. Good night.